Awesome. Well, I understand you are the judicial uh, assistant to the defense, but why the sudden uh, ingress into my courtroom? Ingress, huh? Hmm. Entrance, maybe? That's the meaning of the word? Oh, uh, you are voicing Archie, right? You do know that. Uh... I can't hear you, if you are wondering. I cannot hear you. Ha! <laughs> a judicial assistant and a woman, no less. Oh man, that's the rule state man. that females are not permitted into this court of law other than to testify. Damn, that's <laughs> okay. Um, sexist. Yeah, it... yeah. I mean, it's it, 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 it's it, the nineteenth century. Accurate, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I fully understand. I ask only for five minutes of time. And also, wh what is this like uh, hypocrisy, man? Like, Auchi was simping over here, and then like uh, a woman <laughs> enters and he's <laughs> like, "No, no, woman, <laughs> I'm gay now." <laughs> I think for two reasons. I think he was sleeping for two reasons. Uh, first, <clears throat> she, uh, uh, that woman is from overseas. Yes. And the second, uh, uh, she had awesome head. I have some wild evidence that I must hand so? over to the defense, she says. <laughs> You're too late, little girl. The trial has already been concluded. Five minutes. I will not allow a moon more. But, Your Excellency... I'm most grateful. Um, who exactly are you? I'm sorry, there is no time. Please, simply accept this for now. What is it? A report about something? Written in English. Oh no. It's Giselle Brett's research. Mm hmm. The English woman's? After the, fir the trial resumed earlier, I hurried back to the university. I went to Dr. Wilson's laboratory in the medical faculty and borrowed this paper. Oh yes, that's right. Miss Brett was studying under the professor, wasn't she? So, does this research, whatever it is, have something to do with the case? I'm afraid I don't know. I haven't been able to listen to the proceedings of the trial myself. Oh, no, of course not. Special characteristics of Courier and its effects on human subjects. Courier? Courier? What's that? I've never heard that word before. Time is up! The prosecution demands the immediate removal of this female trespasser from the courtroom. There was a little, too little time for me to read it in detail. But I summarized what I called a oh, note just inside the cover. If you think it could be valuable, please cast your eye over it. This is wonderful, thank you. Giselle's report has been at the key. Goodbye then, and good luck. She disappeared. Disappeared! <laughs> like that guy from the mirror. She was a ghost all along. You have had a long enough counsel. We cannot detain our English guest any longer. I ask the prosecution and the defense now on uh, one last time. Does either side have any further evidence to present to the court? I presume not, but... The prosecution has made its case convincingly enough already. Nothing more to add, Your Excellency. Runuska, we're out of options here. This really is our very last chance. Yes, I know. Your Excellency, the defense does have new evidence. Hmm, that look. The unyielding stare of a true Japanese warrior. Well, Mr. B Miss Sprit? Yes, Your Excellency? If you wouldn't mind, perhaps you will grace us with your presence a little longer? 
It's a delightful invitation, but I'm afraid... It's not so very long until tea time. I'll have to politely decline. Forgive me, Miss Brett. It seems I wasn't clear. I realized it was a phrase as a question, however... It was not. I must ask you to treat that as an order. I've said it many times before, but... Japanese language makes no sense. My apologies, dear lady. So, Consul. What yeah. is the new evidence that yeah, the it's pretty obvious. So you go to the notebook. I mean, we it's should bad. probably look at it, but whatever. Miss Giselle Brett, I understand you are studying at the Dr. Wilson at Yumi University, doing research. Research, by sheer coincidence, perhaps, it's a deadly poison. What? Poison? Where are you going with this council? A toxin known as Kurer, Your Excellency. In the slightest amount of this deadly poison entering the body leads to instant death. Mm -hmm. What? What complete answer nonsense? Kurer, you say? I've never even heard of it. You won't have done. What do you mean? I mean that you won't have heard of Kure before, for one very simple reason. It doesn't exist in our country, I see. It doesn't exist. So it's a British poison. <laughs> Correct, which means... No matter what tests the police can do for toxins, they never identify a rare. Why? Because there is there is no test available here that can identify the presence of this highly deadly poison. What? Order, order, order! Council, does this deadly poison truly exist? According to this report offered by the visiting uh, uh, research student from England, Kurer has long been used in the tribes people of South America as a poison to uh, lace their arrows. It seems that it is uh, reasonably well known among European doctors and scientists, but yeah. To, to lace their arrows? The report states that it is produced from the extract of a tree that grows deep in the uh, Amazonian jungle. I see, so yeah. And it was the first to brought back to Europe at the turn of the century by explorers. It claims that animals shot by arrows laced with Korea suffer instant death. Doesn't that about sum, sum it up, Miss Brett? Trumpery, this expressions are utterly trumpery. To start with, if the victim had been administrated some of this so-called deadly poison, he would have been screaming and raining in pain, as the other diners would have surely noticed. Hmm, that's true. What do you say to that, Inspector? Obviously, I ought have noticed the disturbance like that. Hmm, I don't remember anything like that either. I didn't notice the professor being in any kind of pain. I mean, it's in instant death, if so. According to this, however, it's, it's the other way around. Hmm. What do you mean, the other way around? The very fact that the victim didn't show any visible signs of distress. It's evidence that the courier was used. Yeah, it's instant death. Yeah, literally. Explain this, old console. The moment uh, this toxin enters a person's system, it causes instant paralysis. In other words, afflicted victims lose all strength and are completely unable to move. 
Even if they were in total agony, there would be no visible signs of pain at all. How terrible! Obviously, if a man lost all strength in his muscles, he'd collapse on the floor, but he was sitting, so... But if we chair under him for support, as Dr. Wilson did, the effects could go largely unnoticed. But I don't follow, Kazuma. It's just paralyzes. I thought the poison caused instant death. The full explanation is extremely unpleasant. The poison causes immediate paralysis, as I said, leaving the victim unable to move. But after a short time, the paralysis is so severe, it causes the muscles that control respiration to fail. Duration? In other words, the actual cause of death is suffocation. In all the while, the victim is conscious and aware, just unable to move. That's kind of To the observer, it will look almost like the victim was slipping pe uh, peacefully into an endless sleep. But for the victim himself, his final moments will be a living hell. That is the true nature of this deadly courier poison. Da da da. <laughs> and you're suggesting that this bottle console actually contains the terrifying this terrifying po poison. Objection! This 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 is all very convenient, isn't it? If you tear to an unknown poison for which there is no means of testing, what a happy tale for the defense. Hmm, if I may. All these facts, you think you are so clever, you don't miss it all some minus. It is you who must be taught. Oh, of course. Dear lady! So, this is how you Japanese people behave, is it? What? You steal another's honest hard work and then announce the results as if you discovered them. I'm appalled. What a loathsome act. Well, Miss Brett, the feeling is mutual. Whatever do you mean? Capitalizing on an unfortunate circumstance of an innocent man to frame him for a heinous crime? That really is a low sum act, wouldn't you agree? Objection! Enough of this, I for one refuse to accept it. The idea of some poison that doesn't even exist in the great empire of Japan is... is... breaking the rules! <laughs> <laughs> What's so funny? <laughs> oh, excuse me, your ex... Excellency? Uh, yes, Miss Brett. May I borrow that bottle for a moment, please? No, don't give it to her! <laughs> <laughs> um, well, yes, I don't see... Um, why not? Why this... not, really? <laughs> yeah, why not to give the uh, culprit... I to give a potential suspect... Oh, okay. She doesn't actually hold it. Yeah, I thought she was just going to break it and spill it on the ground. <laughs> Don't get too big for your boots, you insignificant little island boys. Sorry. To an English woman such as myself. Even is an island there. too! <laughs> Technically. <laughs> this whole affair is a far farcical comedy. You, you, your little police games and these foolish court romantics, it's laughable really. But I'm getting bored of it all now. It's time for the games to end. Cheers. Wait! W what are you doing? Hmm. 
No sparkle left at all. How appropriate to this shabby affair. He's shocked. He's also shocked. And he is shocked too. They all are shocked. Yeah. Goodness. Whatever is the matter, you look quite stunned. So, no cure. The bottle was clean. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> you look quite incredulous, little boy. But of course, it's the simple truth. Thank you for presenting the findings of my research so concisely here in this grand venue, signed. Gah. Thank you, waiter. Now then, your excellency. Oh, um, yes, Miss Brett. I should like to be excused now, please. I think I've given more than enough of my time for the further ends of this friendship between our countries. Oh, yes, dear lady. We are most gratified of all the assistance you have given. Oh, lost. You broke Ryunosuke, how dare you! This doesn't make sense! There had to have been poison in that bottle! So how? How did she... Oh man... How did she swallow a whole glass and live to tell the tale? And I... I don't understand it. Well, I suppose if nothing else, this little Far Eastern charade will make for interesting conversation at the next party I attend to London. There, it has to have been poisoned that bottle, doesn't there? But there can have been, because otherwise she would have killed over dead. A above mentioned effects occur when the poison enters the body through a wound. Such as that it I by see, a I see, I see. Dart. So if you like drink it, it's fine? Yes, I guess. I mean, that's weird. So that means, like, the. Oh, so, like, it entered through the burn on his hand. Is that it? Yeah, like, you will poison. see. I won't tell you for now. <laughs> uh, it contains poison, yeah, I see, I see. It's maybe. I mean, you must give her all the clues now. That bottle of water contains, contains poison. poison. Yeah. The culprit did put clear poison into Dr. Wilson's cor carbonated water. I. The defense refuses to change his position. You're serious? Objection! Fool! Are you blind? There is no possible way that bottle could contain poison. I mean, we just saw... Miss Brad drinking the water from it? That's right, which rather complicates your argument, I think. And I believe that, that complication can be explained. How exactly? I need to think through all this... All the things that won't quiet it up here, one by one. I'm sure the answer is the evidence we have in the court record somewhere. It has to be. Yeah, you showed it to me, so... Very well. Yes. If the defense truly intends to assert this claim... Then I must ask you to support the assertion with evidence. Yeah. Yes! <laughs> the answer to this riddle is right here in Ms. Brett's own research report. It's not a valid explanation. No. After all, we don't speak English. The report is utter gibberish. This impudent young scoundrel is trying to ridicule I mean, the court, Your Excellency. Like, uh, Satoru speaks English. <laughs> I'm not trying to ridicule anyone, honest. I'm just reading Satoru's notes. I concur. This report is too extensive to be considered in, in its entirety by court. 
You will direct us to the uh, uh, pertinent section, Council. Which section of the report reveals the alleged answers? Uh... Wait, was it the third part? Oh, oh no, the second part. Root of entry, yes, the second one. Special characters. We've been hearing a lot about this courier poison. And it's left me curious about something. Oh, council? Well, it sounds as though indigenous hunters have been using this poison for years and years. Place the heads of the arrows that they shoot at whatever prey they are hunting. So, I've been led to believe, yes. And the point of hunting is to catch prey to eat. Get to the point, please! But, the way to use these laced arrows, does that mean there would be traces of poison left in the prey the hunters were going to eat? Yes, good point. So surely the hunters wouldn't want to eat their prey, would they? Because then they'd be eating poison. Good gracious, Consul. No, that would be madness. But I actually found the answer. That conundrum in this research paper here. Under special characteristics, it says this. The poison starts to work after entering the body through a wound. Through a wound, you say? I see, that makes sense. Yes, the mention of that particular detail seemed a little strange to me, though. But it all makes sense when you inter interpret uh, what's written like this. When courier enters the body through an open wound, it has terrifying poisonous effects, however. When it enters the body via the mouth, it has no poisonous effects whatsoever. What? Miss Brad, you authored this research, you knew courier's, courier's special characteristics, and you knew that that you could make a spectacle of drinking that water without any danger to yourself. You meddling little... Whoa, that's an actual oh God, swan? Like... <laughs> Rapscallion! Well, Rinosuke, it turns out... You're an even better lawyer than I thought you'd be. Really? Me? A lawyer? All, all this poison talk is fascinating, I'm sure. But if I fail to see how possible... So, the ill-bred little puppy has a new toy to play with. Some facts he read in a book. He read in a book. But I'm afraid knowledge doesn't suit you, little boy. It only makes you look silly. What are you trying to say? Your schoolboyish logic has a fatal flaw. Schoolboyish? Flaw? As even your brain has managed to deduce, courier is safe to ingest. It seems likely that its effects are neutralized by the acid acidic, acidic nature of the gastric suckers. Suckers, I guess. Yeah, I mean, it's, I think it's, uh, he, she's talking about the. Uh... Acid in the stomach? Yeah. Uh, yes, I, I, I also think. Oh, yes, well, of course. Gastric suckers? What are they? <laughs> so, if this lethal poison is completely harmless when drunk, the professor wouldn't have died when he swallowed it, would he? Yeah, that's the problem. <laughs> that's right. Good gracious! It's basic science. Science that even a schoolboy should be able to understand, no? Order, order in court, order! The logic holds. If the lady and the professor drank the same poison, 
they will be affected in the same way. Ah, uh, are you trying to suggest? Yes, this rare poison is completely irrelevant to the case on the trial. That's right. Truly, even a cockroach like you could understand something oh, as simple as I that. Oh, I fucking get it. Uh, didn't the doctor uh, got his teeth removed? So technically, he has a wound in, in his uh, mouth, like uh, the, where the teeth what, got. Uh, you said teeth. Yeah, I mean his teeth got taken off. So technically, ha he has a wound inside his mouth. So the poison Not wound. Teeth by tooth. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I mean tooth. Yes, tooth, tooth, tooth. Yeah. So when he drunk it, uh, the place, the wound that he has uh, after he got his tooth removed. Uh, the poison entered through there. Maybe? Maybe. Let's see. What is this? Welling up inside me. So he did have... Uh, I've never felt like this before. A sort of conviction to break down all the... Dis discrepancies. It's so intense. Almost rage-like. It's more than anything else. It's an animalistic desire. To take down my prey. Oh, he yes. said his first yes, objection. He yes, not just always, yes. He said it. He said it. I don't think so, Miss Giselle Brett. How dare you use that tone with me? You know very well there is no fatal flaw here. You know exactly why, even though both you and the victim swallowed the same poison. You are alive, but Dr. Wilson is dead. Counsel, I'm sure I don't need to remind you. You must provide compelling evidence. By uh, the way, uh, the music that you now hear, I hope, is uh, his real objection theme. Yeah, I hear, I hear. As we know now, now know that this person is completely harmless when ingested. Why will Dr. Wilson alone have been killed by the Kurera? Because of his tooth! Take that! As Miss Brad so readily pointed out, he drank the same water as the professor. However, there was a fundamental and fatal difference between the two diners. A fatal difference? What do you mean? Toxic effects of Courier are only felt when the poison enters the body through an open wound. So, for a healthy person with no injuries, drinking it is completely harmless. But, but if there was a wound inside the mouth of the person drinking the poison water. Inside? Yes, like the wound you might have. If you had just been to the dentist and had the tooth extracted, for example. Ah. Oh! Miss Brad, you've acknowledged many times in your testimony already that you were well aware of the Dr. Wilson's dental appointment that day. Ah. So that's it. You used that knowledge to orchestrate this. Is, is she laughing? I don't like to repeat myself, but honestly, I can't resist. These childish courtroom games, your half-baked arguments are also puerile. What? What do you mean? Don't worry, little schoolboy. You'll find out soon enough. You see, when you leave vital evidence lying around, you never know what that might happen to it. No! I mean, it could just yeah. slip. Oops. <laughs> yeah, I knew she would do that. Damn, damn. She'll be oh dear, how careless of me. I'm afraid some crucial evidence may have just been tragically destroyed. No! What's it? What just happened? 
It's the English woman, she just smashed the bottle. In the Supreme Court, what a terrible blunder. Officer, what are you waiting for? Officer! Officer, hello, how are you? Collect up as much of the water from the broken ball as possible, at once! You're wasting your time. In this type of carpet under my feet here was a gift from the British Empire. I assure you, it will soak up the water beautifully. You have neither the technology nor the presence of mind to recover it. <laughs> How could you? You you won't get away with this. You can thump and the, the, the bench and shout as much as you like, little boy. But I'm afraid we'll never know how now, will we? If there really was poison in the bottle or not? You, you fiend! And let us not forget, we still have some very compelling evidence left in fact. Isn't that right, Consul for the Prosecution? Oh, of course, of course. You're referring to this photographic print, I presume, dear lady? That's right. And really, look in this photograph. It's as clear as day, isn't it? The poor professor was sitting with his back to me. So of course the only person who have shot him from the front is the little schoolboy. No! You killed the victim that day, using Kurar! And then, in order to frame you, Nusuke Naruhoto for the crime... You waited until he picked up the pistol you'd arranged for him to find on the floor! Before you shot the professor dead uh, in the chest with your own hidden gun! Yeah... That's probably what I suspected, but... Then in the confusion that followed, all you had to do was turn the dead professor and his chair around. You see? You had uh, every opportunity to commit this crime. I mean, to be fair, turning the uh, dead person like that around is really hard. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what a wonderful imagination you have, young man. Mm. A hidden gun, you say? And I shot the professor's dead body, did I? Well, I'm terribly sorry, but... I don't have a shred of evidence. Exactly! And as you have nothing to support your wild claims, the prosecution's stance remains unchanged. The victim, Dr. John H. Wilson, was killed by a gunshot to the chest. They leave it in cold blood by the accused, you know, Skinner Ruhado. Uh. Hmm. 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 It's unbelievable. How could this be happening? You had her, but now you're surely going to get away with it. Whoever she destroyed it, that evidence was absence. You knew, Scar. Yes. We've come this far, but now, now you're the only one who can finish it. What? What do you mean? We've lost a wild piece of evidence, it's true. So if there are any clues left for us to use now... They must be... in your head. Hold it. I still have this bottle, by the way. <laughs> yeah, I... <laughs> <laughs> um... So I guess... In my head? You told me before that your powers of observance are the one thing you could really depend on. Oh, so I still have the thing in my court record. In my head court record. Well, yes. Well, yeah. well yes, it's that's true, true but... Oh, I mean, your turn. But I did manage to notice that this woman was a foreigner with this one at your head. So, think back again now. Try to remember every last detail about the scene that day. Everything you saw. Everything you felt. Every color, every smell. Smell. What I saw, what I felt. 
Every color. Oh. Is Kazuma right? Somewhere in the vibrant memory of this same scene in my head. Could there be another clue to expose the identity of Dr. Wilson's killer? There is a clue, I mean there is a there blood. There is a clue. He's spare out blood? Actually, Kazuma. I think I might have something. Thinking back over everything I saw, I think I might have uncovered another clue. Haha. <laughs> You always have something up your sleeve, don't you, Rinosuke? Come on then, let's wipe the smug smile off that English woman's face with some evidence. Alright, I can't wait! It's been niggling me for a while that something feels amiss in my memory of that day. Whatever, it is could be the key to arriving at the truth about all this. It's here somewhere. The clue that shows who Dr. Wilson's uh, real killer must have been. Oh, oh my yeah, God. the blood, it's the blood, the, the blood. Can, could it be? The blood? <laughs> <laughs> Inspector Hosonaga, tell me this. Yes, what is it? He's still miles away, probably thinking about that bottle being smashed. As you've said a number of times now, you strive for perfection in your investigations, don't you? Absolutely! I wonder, therefore, if perhaps you took anything else from the scene of the crime. Like, for instance, the plate of steak that you took to the victim's table that day. Wait a minute! Where are you going with this? Where are you going with this, little boy? It's just a memory that's been troubling me. What memory? I saw the scene shown in this photographic print with my own eyes that day. And I saw that on the wooden base of the plate the steak was served on was a splattering of blood. What? Oh really? And what of it? Obviously that must have happened when you shot the professor. No, that can't be the case. Take a good look at the photograph and the relative position of everything there. The plate of steak is almost directly behind the victim. If I am supposed to have shot Dr. Wist in the chest from the front, there is no way that blood from the victim could have ended up directly behind him. Yeah. Hmm, <clears throat> yes. For blood to have made it onto the plate, it implies the plate was between the victim and the shooter. Yes. Which means the shooter must have been uh, sitting up the professor, as you were. Giselle Brett. I beg your pardon? This, this is beyond ridiculous, fabricated nonsense. Is the court uh, seriously accepted to believe that the accused has apparently just remembered seeing? Yes. Oh my god, it, it was person. holded from Hasnaga. This... This could be the moment that my entire career in the police force has been leading to. Spectre, you mean? Yes, I took the plate. In the interest of preserving evidence from the scene of the crime. I took it, meat and all. And I don't care if they call me a crime scene thief because of it. You did what? I took the stick that you had been eating, Miss Brett. I took the stick that the surgeon had been eating. And I did it all in the name of justice. Justice Good. for all. Then you can find out for sure. Whether or not there is a blood stain on Miss Brett's plate. We must examine it now. Mm. 
Inspector! The court wishes to examine the plate from the victim's table immediately. Yes, sir! Yes, sir. Yes, sir! Huh, I don't know. <laughs> Sorry for the delay. Here's what you ordered, the stick. Well, what about the butt? Is there butt on it? Of course there isn't. Quickly, Inspector, the blood man... The blood man, show the cord. Of course, examine the plate, plate at your leisure. No, no blood. No blood. Do no they have ammonia anywhere. or something? No blood anywhere. But, but no, that's impossible! Ah, oh, yeah. I know, I saw it. I'm sure of it. It was right there on the table behind the professor. There was blood on the side of the plate. <laughs> what an unbecoming expression, little boy. Oh, you see, this is why I always say you can't trust what the Japanese tell you. <clears throat> I could agree more. In the case of this uh, disgrace to the Empire. I believe we may finally reach the conclusion in this trial. Let's hope so. This, this pretend attempt at courtroom proceedings is painful to watch. But I do promise to do my best to forget all about it when it's over. You brought him again. Ha! <laughs> this sorry looking steak. You use the facts all too clearly. If the sorry looking accused wishes to examine it again, be my guest. Was it the plate I saw? Or thought I saw? Just a figment in my imagination? This is it now. I've lost. Yunosuke. It's not over yet. Not until the final gavel. Hmm? Never stop believing in yourself. Keep looking forward no matter what. Believe in myself? Really? Hmm. Maybe I should at least examine the evidence for myself. There, yeah, let's do it. Yeah. Huh? Huh? What the... What in the world is this? I think it's a carbon coin. And the hallmark... And the hallmark is from the Hoi era, I believe. Oh, it's the carbon uh, coin the old man was looking for. No, no, I don't mean what is it. I mean... What's it doing there? Wait, did you say it was a Hoya Carbon? Yes, and apart from the meat juices, it looks to be good in condition. I imagine it's very valuable. Hmm, this isn't the first time today there has been talk of Hoya Carbon. I've heard of pearls before, swine. But I've never heard of a uh, bullion in bullion, huh? <laughs> And I don't think you ever will again. This is extra extraordinary. So this means. Oh. What does this mean? I certainly never expected to find a precious coin underneath this thick car of meat. And it's from the whole era too. What would make it? That would make it really quite valuable. It's well marinated in the juices as well. Look. What are, uh, what are you thinking of eating it? No, no. But the next time I order a steak in an expensive restaurant, one thing's for sure: my heart's going to be racing as I lift up the meat and pay <laughs> for a price. I think you might have the wrong end of the stick about this, Renoska. A Koban coin underneath this steak. There's only one logical explanation. Okay. So I find treasure. Literal treasure. <laughs> <laughs> here. Unless the evidence requested by the defense has, no, 
has not been shown to be a problematic in any way. I presume any further investigation of evidence in this trial will be unnecessary. Does the defense have any objection? Objection! That blood stain was going to clinch the trial for me. Can this plate of steak reveal any other clues at all? There is another clue. Your Excellency, please wait. This plate of beef is hiding another clue. Another clue that revealed the shocking truth. The only thing that's shocking here is your unhealthy fascination with beef steak. Your Excellency, I think I've made myself clear, haven't I? I will not be able to turn a blind eye to any more unnecessary procrastination in this trial. I'm sorry, Miss Brett, but we must ensure a thorough examination of the evidence. I will not give a ruling until I am completely satisfied that all the reasonable doubt has been dispelled. I see. As a new infirmed ally of my country, it's still a position, is it? Thank you, Your Excellency. Counsel for the defense, you will now clearly show the court to what you are alluding. Very precisely on this plate, uh, plate of peach stick is the new clue to be found. Yeah. Yeah, indeed, the person again. I see. Good, good gracious, that's the Koban. The Koban? What on earth? A horror air one at that. Miss Brett, this in fact the beef steak that you ordered at the restaurant on the day in question, is it? Tell me, why is there an old coin seemingly hidden underneath the meat? <laughs> what a ridiculous question, how should I know? I've never seen that thing before in my life. I don't know what this is, but I want no part of it. I fail to see how this is relevant. A coin under the meat? That coin simply have been a careless mistake by the chief in a moment of destruction. Don't be absurd. We're supposed to believe that this happened by accident in the kitchen? A rare holy command just happens to be hidden underneath that piece of stick. Yeah, I mean, maybe Dr. John Wilson just grabbed the finger off the ground and put it under his stick. What? Mm. If this turns out to be irrelevant to the case, I'll rip up uh, my ticket to the Great Britain right now. He's right, it can be a coincidence. Your Excellency! Yes, Counsel. The Ray Hoy Coban just happens to be hidden underneath the, that piece of steak. If this turns out to be relevant to the case, I'll give up my lawyer job right now. I mean, you. By all means, don't let us stop you. No one invited you anyway. <laughs> They're all just shouting. <laughs> Perhaps the boy should realize that it is you who is irrelevant. Even though I'm the one on trial here. The point is, it's essential that we ask the owner of this coin if we can explain what he's doing at that stake. The owner? Yes, it's obvious. There is only one person that can belong to Yeah, to the old guy. Um... The one that the Koban that was found underneath the beef steak is... Kuryo Kurikata. Kuryo Kurikata. Obviously, it can only be... The antiques dealer or, and owner of Rasute, Kurio Kurikuta san. Kuri, as in Mr. Cucumber or something? <laughs> Honestly, these ridiculous Japanese names are quite unfathomable. Oh, yes. 
The old man who testified earlier alongside the military sergeant, correct? Yes, Your Excellency. I remember him saying that he was up to something with his command going when it happened. At exactly the moment the gun was fired. The gunshot interested me not. I was far too busy on the floor. Too busy on the floor? Sorry, what were you doing? Hunting for a treasure. Indeed, the Hoi Ara Kubang, my prized coin. In this Hoi Ara Kubang, do, do you mean to tell me? Objection! No, 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 please, why would Kurukuta Sans Koban be sandwiched be between the beefsteak and its plate? It makes no sense. Yes. Which is why I'm asking to bring Kurikuta san back to the witness stand so we can ask him. Officer? Bring both witnesses that uh, testified earlier back in here. Without a moment's delay. I can't believe we've come back around to that pair again. But I have a hunch, a strong hunch. What if we chase down the real significance of this common? We'll find that it's a key element in the case. Now it's four witnesses at this stand. Awesome. What's this all about? Why have I been called up again? Don't you realize that it's dinner time for little boy baby Iroh? When my son's belly is empty, he's fiercer than a pack of wolves. Exploited by the police, we were like miserable dogs, forced to bear false witness. I mean, cast from the courtroom myself, I became a ruined man in a trice, a worthless, withered antique. Nothing more have I to say. The sun was set on this Rasute shop owner's existence. Be that as it may, Kurekuta san. Something has come to the light that requires your clarification. As far as your Rasute memory serves, have you- Ah! That's- yes, that's it! The one! The very one! The very exact one that is! Do you see it? <laughs> His knife got into the boot of the surgeon. Oh yeah, I saw it! That's crazy! Uh, it's probably hurt. <laughs> <laughs> yes. The rep uh, resplendent, splendorous, holy treasure that my rusty bones managed to misplace that fateful day. Can't be. Hmm, as I thought. Young man. Enlighten this discreet old fool. Put me out of my misery. Where? Where is my treasure? Where was it wrapped? No, um, I'm not sure if it was dropped anywhere. We found your corn sandwich between a beefsteak and its plate, soaking in the season's meat, meat juices. S sandwich? The soaking? Seriously? Clearly, it couldn't have uh, fallen there by accident. Which means... Somebody must have hidden it there on purpose. Somebody? Somebody concealed my whole treasure between a slab of meal and a metal plate? I'll kill them! Who would do such a thing? Such an unconsciousable thing! The victim did it? It's weird. Excuse me. Could I say something? Also, I want to tell you something. In this game, you really should watch reactions of the people. Oh, I see. It, okay. it says a lot.
Yes, of course. Proceed, Inspector Hasanaga. I mean, okay, maybe the lady is being weird. Like, if she might have the weirdest reaction. I mentioned this earlier on this, or in the trial, but... I was working on the current restaurant in order to investigate another case. Ah, yes, that's right. The secret undercover operation. La Carnaval is a high-class Western cuisine restaurant. It attracts wealthy diners, including many foreigners. Recently, there's been a run of some similarly executed thieves, thefts targeted at the restaurant's rich clientele. A number of such incidents have been reported to the police bureau. Hmm, wicked crimes indeed. We wanted to nip the case in the butt quickly, especially with so many foreigners being affected. So that's why you were sent in the cover, is it? Yes, I took on the job of a waiter at the restaurant in order to flush out the criminal. It seems likely that this Kopang incident is the work of the same thief. Hmm, so unbeknownst to us, there is a master thief at the work in the restaurant on a regular basis. The place was already the scene of several crimes, it seems. I don't know about the master thief part, but... The identity of the person who stole and hit Kurikuta sans common is all too clear. What? What? Hmm, it could be the police officer. <laughs> I think the court would like to hear the defense's view on this matter. Tell us who is the despicable scoundrel that stole Kurokuta's kabon and hid it under the stick. Police officer, maybe? Uh, Satoru Hosunaga-san? Maybe. This one? Yeah, it, like, let's try it. It might be wrong. I wanna try it. Yes, seems like a likely candidate for a common thief. No, come on, Runesuke. Huh? You, you shocked me, Kazuma. Not as much as you shocked me, yeah, okay. Maybe it's the victim. No one could have appro approached the table unnoticed. Even if you're a crazy fool, you couldn't have missed that. I'm not sure you should be calling Kurikuta-san a crazy fool, Kazuma. It's you! I, I was calling the crazy fool! Uh, maybe I'm on the wrong track here. Bye bye, my star. <laughs> <laughs> it's a fine. I, we're probably just going to game over and again. Uh, and restart at this exact point, right? I don't believe I can. Uh, I can have heard you correctly, Council. Let me hear your opinion on this matter again. Okay. Okay, it's the victim. The victim? Think, dear fellow, think who could have been. It have been. Oh my god, it's not the victim. Really? Yes, it's not the victim. Okay, sure, then that's the lady then. If it's not the victim, then it's the lady. Do you want to hear my answer? I mean... I mean... Um, how could it be the surgeon? That's weird. Really? It's Ace Attorney! <laughs> Everything can happen here. <laughs> Obviously. How? It cannot be you. Surgeon Ace and awesome? What? How? How dare you? You. You. You monster. Monster. I stole that Koban, did I? I'm the master thief of the carnival, am I? You're seriously accusing me of these crimes, I mean, okay, I can at least see the guy, uh... But stealing... it wasn't me, it was Ido. Ido is the mastermind behind all this. <laughs> <laughs> the kid? Really? The, yes, the baby. <laughs> but how the hell did it get under the stick? That's the question. You would push the blame for your crimes onto your own son, an innocent little baby? It's you who's the monster, Sergeant Nosa. Uh, give it a cop, 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 give it a cop. 
Oh my god, the kid's the mastermind! Nipponius Imperial Army Surgeon is an officer preparing to stand down in the Supreme Court, sir. Oh, okay, I was just joking. Maybe. <laughs> Do any of you know of the extraordinary low wage wages uh, the Nippon Imperial Army pays those it expects to keep our country safe? I understand the temporary increase in taxation are owing it to recently ended conflicts to remain in place. And I have heard it's hard for lower ranking soldiers to make a living, yes. All I want is to put a hot meal on the table for my son. That's why you were stealing things at the restaurant? This place is heaven with, heaven with money. Every few days I'll go there and do reconnaissance for a target. And I'd enjoy chomping my way through a good steak at the same time. Sounds like it doesn't bother with a knife and fork or even. Which is only believable. And your target that way is the old man is Kabal. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. He was an easy mark. I slipped the coin in my pocket without any trouble at all. Hmm, a veritable phantom thief you are. I was all set to leave the stake. I was halfway through the war in when it happened. Oh, the stakes got switched. Oh, I see, I see. The freaking detective messed up. So the not the detective, I think. But yeah, I'm, no, I mean maybe. this. Uh, Sar Satoru Hosnogasan messed up. He like took uh, the surgeon's uh, steak and the victim's steak, and when he uh, gave the steak to us, he gave us the surgeon's steak. That's dumb. Okay, sure, whatever. Okay, I got it. Yes, when the professor was shot, I knew that if the police conducted the search and found the coin in my pocket, I'd be finished. I do too. Like I actually thought so of that possibility. It's just that I never thought that Hasunaga would be this uh, inadequate, and like I actually switched them. Okay. So I hid the incriminating evidence as fast as I could, on the double. I slipped it onto the stake, hoping that I'd be able to render this voice with it again at a later date. This is ridiculous. Perhaps you could carry on with this absurd prattling in your own time? Well, Miss Brett? Oh, of course, dear lady, of course. How rude of us. It's quite sure there's no need to detain you any longer at all. <laughs> May this team gentle woman please be excused, your excellency? No. Hmm, indeed. <laughs> yeah, I agree with you, actually. <laughs> the theft of the cabal was clearly perpetrated by this baby cell surgeon. It would uh, certainly appear to be unrelated to Dr. Wilson's murder. Of course it is. Hiding the coin under a lump of meat? This sheer nonsense such an idea astounds me. Nonsense, is it? Um, well, oof. As for, and as for picking up your steak and biting into it without using a knife and fork, beyond nonsense, it's pure madness. Very well, now that all questions concerning this witness testimony have been answered, I see no further justification for detaining her. Miss Brett, you are free to leave. Uh, no. Thank you, Your Excellency. Good luck, everyone. 
and good day. <laughs> that face. Yeah, it's a very derpy face. It's like, hmm, like, <laughs> like all the clockwork in his head is moving. <laughs> Rinusuke, what's the matter with you? This is no time for daydreaming. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he looks like he's daydreaming. Oh, no, it's just... Something about Miss Brett's parting words uh, there got me thinking. I can't quite work out what exactly, but something she said jarred with me. I feel like there was a contradiction there somewhere. Something didn't quite add up. If that's the case, don't just stand there thinking. Make your voice heard. Sorry? You can th think later, but if you don't call out now, it'll be too late. The trial will be over! If you, uh, if you don't, it'll be all over. Yeah, I think this is the part where we actually stop. Wait, Miss Brett! What Miss is it now? Miss Brett. I'm afraid it's one last time. There's something I'd like to ask you. I'd like you to explain the contradiction you are passing in words from just a few moments ago. What are you talking about? What contradiction? Objection! What new student nonsense is this? Well, what parting words are you talking about, Ryunosuke? Hiding a coin under a lap of meat? The sheer nonsense of such an idea astounds me. And as for picking up your steak and biting it into it without using a knife and fork, it's beyond nonsense, it's pure madness. Yes, I'm right. What she said there exposed an undeniable contradiction. Oh, yeah, I think Runescu is just trying to Did say you that notice the, this contradiction? the stick is not from uh, John Wilson's. I'm going to need to see evidence, Council. Evidence. If Miss Britt's words truly are con contradictory, where is the evidence to prove it? The stick that Miss Britt had been eating before the professor was killed, yes, go on. More accurately, Your Excellency. The stick that was on the victim's table just before the professor was killed. I'm just splitting hairs! Not true. Doesn't something about this stick strike you as very unnatural? Unnatural? What ca What on earth do you mean? It's extremely obvious. I'm talking about the shape of the edge where it's been eaten. I see you've noticed it too, Miss Brad. Yeah, it's Steve Marks. No, it's what exactly, Council? Just a few moments ago, Miss Brad claimed. No Englishman could even com contemplate picking up a steak and biting into it without using knife and fork. Yeah. Of course she did. She's a refined English gentlewoman herself. But John is Take also a look, like good look at this steak. In particular, the edge where it's been eaten. As you can see, there are clearly defined barbaric teeth marks here. Oh! Ah! It looks like Miss Brett has realized something. So, if the witness, as she claims, wouldn't contemplate eating anything without using a knife and fork, there shouldn't be teeth marks in the steak at all. But what is your actual point? Perhaps the delightful Miss Brett was ravenously. Oh, um, whatever you say, dear lady. As I said, Arlen must be leaving now. Afternoon tea with the Minister of Justice cannot possibly wait any longer. Of course, of course. This will all be over in the blink of an eye. Rest assured, I'm about to put this rook in this his place. Just leaving. I've heard enough. You irritating little spectacled samurai relic. Of, of course. Dear lady! <laughs> What's the matter, Miss Brett? Have you ruffled your feathers? <laughs> Literally. 
<laughs> yes. <laughs> Clearly the witness knows what this means. She's realized the catastrophic implications these teeth marks in the stake have for her. Ranuska, do you know where you're going with this? Yes, but now at last it's all come together. The mysterious teeth marks in the stake. It had allegedly been eaten with cutlery. The reason why the blood stain I know I saw somehow seemed to have disappeared. Now I want to eat some meat. And most importantly, the evidence that proves once and for all. Who shot Dr. Lewis on that day? I accept that these teeth marks in the stick are a little unnatural, as you put it, Council. But what exactly are you suggesting that, tell that tells us? Everything, Your Excellency. Everything? Yes, I believe these barbaric teeth marks in the stake here amount, of, amount to conclusive evidence in this case. Evidence that will prove beyond any doubt who shot Dr. Wilson. Shut up. Conclusive evidence. How many times have I heard that today? You wouldn't know the meaning of the phrase. Typical Japanese empty threats. How can you be so sure? Oh, it's quite simple. If you really had such conclusive evidence, you have presented it to the court long ago. Um, yeah, Actually, we're going there. <laughs> the evidence I'm talking about hasn't been brought before the court yet. Hasn't been? What? But just because it hasn't been shown yet, doesn't mean that the evidence does not exist. This is absurd! The trial has run several hours already, and you say there is evidence yet to be brought forward? B. I don't believe you have it. I don't, but there is someone who does have it, someone in this very courtroom. And if, and if that person is willing to submit the piece of evidence I'm referring to, it will solve every remaining mystery about this case. Very well. I have a feeling this will be the, my last request of the defense in this trial. Who possesses the conclusive evidence that will reveal the truth about this whole affair? Uh, Hosunaga-san! The answer is obvious. It's Inspector Hosunaga. What? I, I heard? <laughs> yeah, he, he kind of messed up. Yes. You. You think I have uh, been uh, withholding conclusive evidence? Yeah. <coughs> That's ridiculous. No, no, no. I'm not saying that. Everyone's attention has been focused on this take with the teeth marks. Yes. Now, L.A. this afternoon, Sergeant Nosa told the court the following. I'd, I'd enjoy chomping my way through a good steak. And as well as submitting to stealing Kurukuta san's coin, he told us that he slipped under the steak. You, you, watch it, Karet! I'm superior officer! Sergeant Dosa, could you please confirm something for me? Was the steak that you put the coin under, in fact, your own steak? Tension! Affirmative, of course. It might be a soldier in the I might be a soldier in the Imperial Nippon Army, but still I'm not brave enough to ask a foreign gentle lady if she'd might be manhandling her meal her meal to hide something in it. In other words, the state of the detective submitted this evidence earlier. Was in fact Sergeant, Sergeant Nosa's meal. But that makes no sense! That plate was taken from the victim's table. Yet yeah, the gentlewoman doesn't take bites of, of her steak, nor did she have any opportunity to steal the coin. Of course I didn't steal it. Do you suggest such a thing would be an affront to the entire British Empire? Well then, how do you explain this paradox?
Exactly. Surely you're not going to suggest the decision switched the two stakes over. <laughs> you did switch the place. Uh, you took him, right? Well, after it happened, the, um, I, I was just helping Alina a bit. Okay. <laughs> when I saw the civilian had been murdered right in front of my eyes like that, I panicked. As I said, I immediately lifted my stake and hid the cone underneath it. But then, when I, the waiter announced he was a current policeman, I felt I'd had it. If he decided to investigate my slab of meat, that'd be it. I'd be getting my matching orders. So when the cadet here was arrested and taken off kitchen, I seized my chance. With military precision and timing, I switched my stake with one on the foreign ladies' table. What? We can't have. I. I never saw you do such a thing. It was called Operation Lightning Bolt. There was no time for strategic plan. It was do or die, I tell you. So yes, I did what had to be done. Huh? Unbelievable! However, fear not, prosecutor son. What now? I saw the press buttons of my uniform. That's all I did, sir. All you did? It's plenty, sergeant. Yes. So, if Sergeant knows to switch the plates over, it means he took Miss Brett's stake and the plate it was on back on his own table. Yes, that follows. Inspector Kosunaga. Yes. Early in this trial, you told the court this. You said that you had only taken Miss Brett's. Uh, uh, stake after the incident, but also the surgeons. That to preserve evidence, you had taken both. Ah! <laughs> That's correct! Then please present it to the court now. The plate that was actually on the victim's table at the precise moment he was shot. The best theme in this game. Okay. What can they possibly tell us now? I mean, a cold slap of tough meat? You can't have the slightest beer in the case. No! You're not really your arrow of this one, lady! I... I beg your pardon? Surely you're not that forgetful. Surely you remember the reason why the stick pan promises to prove such a problem for you, no? Hmm, you are the ones who decided it was a problem, not me. The reason the defense asked to see that plate was to confirm something the defendant remembers seeing. He thinks he remembers. I'm quite sure for that I saw Miss Brad. Now the side of the plate that was on the table directly behind Dr. Wilson. There was a clear splatter, uh, spattering of blood from the gunshot wound to the victim's chest. I believe the defendant's memory serves him well. And now we have the evidence to prove it. The plate you were eating from, Miss Brett. Let us not pretend this any further. Prolong this any further. Inspector, you will show the evidence to the court. Present the beef stick and the plate that was originally on the victim's table at the time of the incident. Yes, sir. Sorry for keeping you. Here it is. Here is the other stick and its plate. 
Please, feel free to examine it. Oh, and the blood, blood is... stain. It's clearly visible, look! Wait, is it? Yeah, it's, it's a bit dark. Uh, I this probably makes should everything increase clear. the light of my uh, computer screen. The blood you can see on the side of the plate. It shows that at the moment the victim was shot, he was facing the table with his back to me. In other words, it's impossible Naruhoto-san to have shot the victim. Ah! It, it can't be. In fact, there is only one person who could possibly have shot Dr. Wilson from the front. I'm sure everyone knows by now who that person is. Uh, um, that's right, Miss Giselle Brett. It's you! How done? By a Japanese? Me? By a Japanese schoolboy? No, no, no! Whoa! It's alive! It's alive! It's killing both! Yeah. <laughs> Wait, she's escaping! <laughs> she's literally escaping the car by flying! She can uh, look. Nice guy! Yes, he can guys! She didn't flew away. No. <laughs> Please excuse my little outburst. I briefly lost my composure. Most unbecoming behavior for an English gentlewoman. Forgive me. Well, Miss Brett. I think it's time you told the court what actually happened that day. The truth, this time. Gladly, your excellency. It was I who took the professor's life using prayer. Prayer. As you summarized, I chose that particular day for one very important reason. The professor had the dental appointment for the, ex for the extraction of one of his teeth in the morning. So you plan to kill the professor, knowing that no trace of poison will be found on the, on his water. Because Kurara is unheard of here in Japan. Yes. Of course I never intended to remain in the restaurant for as long as I did. I only needed to see the professor take one tiny sip of his water and would be all over. I would place the steak I had ordered in front of him to make it appear as though he had been dining alone. And leave immediately, however. Before any of that happened, there was an unexpected visit at the professor's table. That would be me, I suppose. Yes, you. Who else? Such a trifling matter, but but the fact that you decided to come over to greet the professor meant that I had lost my chance to slip away unnoticed. In due course, the professor took a sip of his water and was paralyzed. I made sure he was sitting in his chair such that he wouldn't fall. There was no going back at that point, so I con concocted a plan on the spot of the moment. A plan to pin Dr. Wilson's murder on this innocent man. So what? I happen to know that the professor always carried the gun. I decided to use the fact that fact to my advantage. Mm -hmm. I had the bottle of Greer in my handbag and my own pistol can sit under my skirt. Yeah, I see, skirt. Uh, under your skirt? 
So I was right. <laughs> yes, Yuneski was right. Uh, there were two guns. Yes. And then I finished my coffee and got up to leave. That's when I noticed the professor's gun, which you had presumably placed on the floor. Placed where you were, sure that I would notice it. And everything went according to plan. You noticed the gun as I had attended. And then, just as you bent down to pick it up, That's when you shot the professor with your own gun, even though at that point he was already dead. Naturally, the gunshot caused a commotion at which point the waiter appeared. Oh, Mr. Eisen, Lara Hotosan was the culprit and apprehended him. But uh, I was kind of wondering, did the woman have two guns or what was the gun on the floor? Like, was it the professor's gun? Actually? I took him to the pantry that adjoins I... the, the kitchen and locked him inside. That's when I took the opportunity to turn the professor and his chair around. Because, of course, you needed to make it look like the defendant had shot Dr. Wilson from where he picked up the gun. Wow, she's strong, like, able to, like... Make the chair move around. So there you have it. That is the en entirety of my misdemeanor. Your Excellency. Yes. Yes. I wonder. Might I speak with you in private later? I shall call on you. She's trying to have an affair so that to lower her own sentence. <laughs> 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 yes. Thank you. Good day then, everyone. I hope you can forgive me, Arachodo-san. Disappeared. Yes, like that guy from the meme. <laughs> <laughs> it will seem. This trial has finally run its course. I presume the prosecution is in agreement. This this can't be the Kitsuchi Awuchi does not lose. Not to the likes of this this Rookie student! You'd be, uh, you'd better start getting used to tough opposition. Uh, what? Yes? This insult to the Auchi family name will never be forgotten. You become considerate of age, Consul, but the old have to stand aside and make way for the new. <laughs> Holy shit, he's gonna. It's the way of the world. May you never forget that. He's gonna. <laughs> cut down. Oh shit! <laughs> <laughs> and, it, and now he has uh, hair from the uh, Apollo Justice Ace Attorney one. Yes. <laughs> Was it Winston? A thousand millennium uh, may pass. Yes. And still, the Auchi clan will never measure up to the Narahoto clan. Holy shit! He predicted the future! <laughs> yes. This trial in the Supreme Court of Japan will, I believe, go down in history as the start of a new chapter in our country's judicial system. Despite being summoned as the accused, you, Ryunosuke Narahoto, presented an excellent case. I, I thank you, Your Excellency. To use uh, of the use of evidence and deduction to unravel the truth is a modern methodology. 
I mean, what the hell did you do before this? <laughs> After all, it's only been a few short decades since our country opened its doors to the wider world, yeah. Okay. But the Western ideas of science are rapidly gaining acceptance here. I feel sure that science will soon bring new methods of investigation and new procedures of, procedures of justice. A new future of law awaits, but what it will look like, I cannot begin to imagine. This is for the young to pursue. Kazuma Asogi Yes? After this trial, you are set to embark on a journey of discovery to the illustrious British Empire. Learn all you can, absorb everything of the wider world that you are able to. And do not forget to fulfill the mission imposed upon you. I understand, Your Excellency. What's that about? Why do you look so grateful, son? Oh, never mind. Oh. As for you, Yurunosuke Narhodo. Oh, yes. A new license, how can I put it? Unusual potential. I very much look forward to seeing how you carry that onwards. Thank you, Excellency. It's time to deliver the final this verdict. Is so loud. I hereby find the defendant, Rinusuke Narhoto. Not guilty. Not guilty. <laughs> <laughs> Ouch. Ouchie's face. <laughs> this court is now adjourned. Mm. Also, just a thing I noticed. Just like, the, the last name Ouchie and the last name Pain. Like, is Pain like the uh, English translation of Ouchie in Japanese? Yes. Oh, I see. I, do, I yes. see. That's why uh, why the things are this way. Because uh, this game doesn't seem to have the uh, Capcom English translations, huh? It like goes with the Japanese names. Kind yeah, of. This game have uh, official uh, translation, but uh, Ace Attorney trilogy was translated uh by fans i see it so was, that's uh, then used as official i see so that's why you like phoenix right like the name is also like uh like this huh because the original japanese yeah. is definitely also uh something narahoto like something new something narahoto also right in the original japanese like phoenix's uh, real name yes yeah that's yeah, cool actual name but Phoenix Wright also have a lot of sense. Yeah. It's a good so shall we continue? It's a good pun, yeah. I can't believe it. I can't believe what's happened. I made it. I defended myself. I made it through the coroner's trial. Runusuke. You finally pulled it off. Congratulations. Well, I do not that without you. Thank you, Kazuma. <laughs> no, no. It was a pleasure to watch you at work. So, you owe me an extra large sukiyaki from the place on Yumei University Street. Don't forget. It's a Susato, so safe for her. Ah, uh, good afternoon. All your hard work has certainly paid off. Congratulations to both of you for proving Naruhoto-san's innocence. Ah, oh, our trusted ju uh, judicial assistant. You worked hard for the result too, you know. Oh no, I didn't do any... thing? 
Thank you so much. <laughs> if we hadn't had the research report of Miss Bratz, I don't know how things would have turned out. Your kind words should really be for my father. I was simply doing as he asked. It was his idea for me to go to university and investigate. Your father? Ah, yes, of course. Forgive me for intruding on the court proceedings, Your Excellency. Susata, uh, Susato Mikutaba, ju Judicial Assistant to the Defense. Speaking of Mikotoba. Ah, there you are. I believe congratulations are in order. Arukado, you did an excellent job. Th thank you, Professor. Oh no, it is I who should be thanking you, after all. Your efforts exposed the true criminal that took the life of my good friend. Good friend? Ah, yes, you mentioned that before. It was you who actually invited Dr. Wilson to Yume University, wasn't it? Yes, that's right. Professor Mikhtoba studied overseas himself. He went to study forensic medicine in Great Britain. Pro presumably that's when you met Dr. Wilson? Exactly. In those days we worked together uh, in the same hospital. Oh, you work together? I've never heard you mention that before. Well, it was a long time ago, besides. It's your turn, Nosogi. Great Britain is a magnificent country. It leads the world. In science, medicine, engineering, culture, and of course, in law. Watch and learn, my boy. Uh, see what's happening in the world's largest melting pot. I will. I'll I learn all that I can. I swear on this, the spirit of the Asogi clan. You're not taking that sword to Great Britain, are you? Of course I am. Mm -hmm. Our Japanese man's katana is his soul. This place shows me where I need to go. And cuts down everything that's in my way. Yes, I've definitely seen how sharp it is already with my own eyes. <laughs> that reminds me, what's happened to the woman? To Giselle Brett, I mean. After all, she's guilty of murder. Ah, yes, her. It's not easy to tell you this, but... What do you mean? Surely she's going to face trial herself now. She's a true culprit, after all. She will be living in Japan in the very near future. For Shanghai. What? Shanghai? Giselle Brett will not appear in court again in this country. I'm certain of that. What? But why not? It's a matter of uh, consular jurisdiction. I don't know who says that. Ah. It's a matter of... Inspect... Hosanaga. It was a hard-fought battle in the courtroom today. Very impressive to watch. I must congr but, but what's all this about consular jurisdiction? We cannot try this particular foreigner for her crimes here in Japan. I see. What? We can try her? But then who? Who's going to bring her to justice? A British consular court will hear her case. Somewhere far away where our voices can't be heard. Huh. But why a consular court? Professor, I simply don't understand. I thought consular courts were a thing of the past now, that we've signed the friendship treaty. Yes, in formal circumstances, you're right. 
then, so long as this is not a serious incident of a highly political nature to our respective governments, I guess it is. They can't invoke a consular court just like that. Oh, can they? Yes, she's a student, but it doesn't justify our governments making secret arguments about her fate, does it? Something strange is going on. Oh, Miss Brett can be held ac accountable for her actions here in Japan. I'm afraid of it for the young student. Today's trial was nothing more than a game all along. There was never any danger of, co of com comeuppance for her. I don't believe it. The British government's foreign affairs ministry has demanded that we hand over custody of Miss Brett. They're obviously taking this case of foreign student committing murder very seriously. But it's all going to change from now on. We can make a change. This is a time of great turmoil. This new era heralded by the star of the 20th century. One day, I have no doubt, that woman will receive the judgment she deserves. Yes, change is coming, and we're the ones driving it. Well, I think that's enough seriousness for now. This evening calls for a celebratory drink. Professor. You're right. There's no time for gloomy faces. We shall be celebrating Rinosuke's not guilty verdict. Let's start having some fun. Awesome. In that case, might I suggest La Carnaval? <laughs> I mean, that place, again. As the head waiter, yes. I should be delighted to provide you with ample food and drink. Um, you're a detective, Hosonaga san, aren't you? Let's not worry about details for now. To La Carnaval! Will you accompany us, Professor? Of course, La Carnival's food is second to none. I shall go and attend to the paperwork for Narhoto-san's release. Oh yes, thank you. So Giselle Brett won't be tried here. I... I suppose that means I'll never know. Yeah, we never know why she murdered never... Dr. Wilson. So, yeah. <laughs> that will be revealed in this game later. Okay. Don't worry. I'll never find out why she killed Dr. Wilson. Kazuma. Yes, Runosuke. I just wanted to say thanks again, that's all. You really saved my skin today. Ha 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 ha! I didn't do a thing! You were the lawyer in there, weren't you? That defense was all your own work. Made the difference though, one day I bet you'll be the best lawyer in the world. Wait a minute. I'm not so sure about that. <laughs> Question mark? To be honest, something kept occurring to me over and over again during that trial. I couldn't help, help thinking that maybe you're the one who de destined to become a great lawyer, not me. What? Come on, be serious! If I helped you today, it was only right at the very start of the trial. Um, he's kinda right, but you have a natural talent for it, for being a defense lawyer I mean. Oh no, not me. All that tense verbal combat. I never want to go through it ever again. I just... I did what you told me to do, that's all. Because I knew I could trust you. That's the point. 
sorry. What do you mean that's the point? Listen, Ryunosuke. Do you know what the most crucial weapon is that any lawyer needs in order to win? Um, knowledge of the law? No. The ability to believe! To believe? To believe what? A defense lawyer has to fight for his clients. He has to believe in them at all times. Like you believed in me when I said I didn't do it. I'm human just like you. I don't have some superhuman ability to know the truth. But you have to make a choice about what to believe in and stick to it when you're defending someone. Sometimes in the courtroom, you can really be backed into a corner. But being able to remain faithful to what you ch chose to believe in, even then. Well, that's not something that anyone can do. It takes a special kind of person. Hmm. Believing in your client. Just look at today's trial. I'm a student lawyer with precious little the real, real experience, but you never stopped believing in me. Well, I... You face seemingly, seemingly hopeless situations time and again, but you never stopped looking for the truth. And in the end you found it, through your own efforts, and because you never stopped believing in me. Thanks, Kazuma. There's something I want to Thanks ask you, actually, uh. Rinosuke. Well, it's a favor, really. Something very important to me. Sounds serious. What is... Oh, you're still here, aren't you? Suna... Oh, oh, oh no. Uh, Inspector Kasanaga. I've arranged some rickshaws for us. Let's go. Thank you. Uh, we'll be right there. Let's pick up this conversation again later. We should be celebrating right now. Your first court victory. And you are study tour to Great Britain, don't forget. Ah oh, yes, that too. So my very first trial came to an end. Kazuma. Professor Mikotova. Sato-san, who acted as my assistant. Inspector Hosunaga, who didn't really play much of a part, but still. <laughs> <laughs> Poor guy. Just because of the help and support of all these people that I managed to get through the trial. But more importantly, Kazuma hadn't yet managed to ask his favor to me. Little did I realize just how much it would change my life. The end. Um, some deflex going around, maybe. We'll see. 